three, two, one. Say a thousand dollars. Well, nothing exploded. Lights are on. Oh, almost all the lights are on. Yep, yep all the lights are on. <laughs> This thing sat out in the raid for two weeks. Two weeks! Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Glad you can be here. Hey, I came across this listing on Facebook Marketplace. It consisted of three pictures. One showing the inside, one showing a nameplate, and one kind of showing that same nameplate side with unbroken, mostly glass. Uh, but the description reads, was in working order until movers dropped it. Mostly glass busted, says it was $100,000 six years ago. He's willing to trade, and he's calling it a water jet CNC, and it's a complete unit with LCD. So I asked for more pictures. He wouldn't send them. I get there. Sure enough, it's been sitting out in the rain for two weeks. And luckily, he took the computer off and the screen off and had those inside. But we took possession of it. We traded. Uh, we brought. It took three of us. Two guys lifting the front and the other guy pushing the back and it was already at the height of the tailgate so we just slid it off with some home depot shelves that were just sitting in the guy's yard uh into the back of my truck so now i gotta somehow figure out how to get that off so we're gonna get it off we're gonna look it over we're gonna troubleshoot it and we're hopefully gonna get this thing up and running again because how cool would it be to have a five axis professional cnc machine in our small little shop huh huh all right let's get going So part of the reason everybody needs friends is so that they can talk you out of doing silly stuff like this when you have purchased something heavier than you anticipated. It is supposed to weigh 400 pounds, but by golly, it, it feels like 600. Uh, so I have devised this uh, crane mechanism here to try to overcome my physical limitations, shall we say. So it's just a couple, what, uh, it's about two inches by maybe four or five inches. Uh, this is pallet wood runners. And they're just kind of strapped together with some forearm forklifts coming back to this come along. And that is attached here. And uh, yeah, so tight, tighten up the come along and it should come along and lift it up. We'll, uh, we'll see. I'm going to see if I can get a buddy to spot me, though, just to be safe. Um, that and this come along doesn't, it's a little busted up. I got it for free, uh, but you have to, like, get your fingers down in here to release it. So, uh, yeah, don't, don't do what you're going to see me do there. As you can see, we're a little bit past where the forks are so we're a little exposed in terms of our center of gravity is going to be just this side of these forks I think even with this weighing quite a bit so our plan is lift this up pull it out and then when it gets to this point where half of the weight is on the tailgate half is being supported by this I start letting out the come along and then it slowly tilts down like that till it gets to the bottom and we may be resting on this, I don't know. I don't think we will though, because I think this is going to go a little bit further out. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I need to build like an overhead crane on the house here. Maybe I can disguise it as a p p pergola. And, uh, I'll just say the, ask the wife if we can do that. That'll work, right? No one's going to say no to that. Let's see if this thing is strong enough to lift up uh, half of 600 pounds. So I guess this would be 300 pounds. Give or take. That appears to have worked. All right, push some more. Oh, 
Tailgate's still good. Gonna find ourselves a new strap, I think. I wasn't too sure about that forearm forklift, but now we know. How much more are you going? Uh, yeah, That's about it's... perfect. <laughs> okay, so, so we're gonna slowly let this down. Yeah. And now it's gonna be not as visible. <laughs> Alright, so we've gotten this monstrosity down onto the ground somehow. This is a 5-axis machine. It has ball screws, it has linear glides, drains in the bottom. We got tank down we have tanks down below to collect the uh, the coolant for when we're milling. Now this thing took a big old honking um, spindle that was powered by a VFD. All in all, mechanically, it seems reasonably intact. Uh, all the axes move uh, up and down freely. I think it's just going to be a matter of assessing damage on the backside here. The motion controller card seems to be intact, along with all the various boards, the driver boards. Um, the computer sits here. And I don't quite get this. So it has this connector on off, right? And uh, some port USB ports, Ethernet, to get to this computer. But over here, it says here that this is 110 volts, 50 hertz. But yet the computer that comes with it is has a 220 volt power supply. So I don't know how they're pulling that off. Uh, but we're going to take this from where it is now to a shining jewel of home workshopery. And that includes figuring out a way to mount a vise in here. I mean, it's a fair bit of uh, workspace as, you, as it is, but uh, it's definitely gonna be for small items. But it's kinda cool that you can work on both the back side and the front side of something as long as it fit inside of this area. So, new possibilities. New possibilities. Yeah, 
let's get this out of the sun. Yeah, so I definitely need to clean uh, all these workspaces off before we get to this. So there, that's better. Uh, so let's go over some of the stuff we've gotten. So the first thing that came with it, other than the unit itself, is this uh, Tyco Electronics touchpad screen. It seems to have come away unscathed. But I know it underwent some forces because I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be in line with this. And uh, yeah, she's nowhere close. So we're going to bend this back. It also came with this computer housing. So yeah, this takes 230 volts AC, it says, um, for your input power. And then you have your various connections, like any computer. It does have a separate uh, Ethernet card, which I imagine does the communication with your, uh, uh, sorry, with the motion controller board. Uh, it came with this sump with mesh screen. So that sits in there like so, I think. And that will filter out any of the fine particles, and then you take it, dump it, and bring it back in. There is a larger pump underneath the machine uh, whose cap, I think, goes on this part. Uh, we'll go real quick check that out. I guess I don't know what that is. That appears to be some kind of massive transformer. So I'm not sure if that, that maybe is what is doing the 110 to 220. Oh, I got this big mamma jamma. So this is probably for the spindle, if it would be my guess, to provide coolant to, for the bearings. That would be my guess. All right, cool. It's massive and heavy. Last but not least, a box of miscellaneous. Some kind of zero bus board. Uh, just random board, and of course, and uh, nailing, uh, reading it. Uh, power board. Alright, so I'm out here in my pajamas, 11.30 at night, because I thought of a way uh, that I might be able to test out the power. So I have 110 volts coming into here. I have the switch turned off now. Uh, this takes the power down through here and into what I believe is a transformer. It comes back out up around and is right here. So what I think is happening is this 110 coming in is converted to 220 at this transformer uh, and then this supplies 220. I pulled these uh, this one out of here and this one out of here with the blue and brown uh, respectively. So um, if I turn on this switch and I get 110 here, then I have no clue what's going on. If I get 220, then I think I got a good idea what's going on. Uh, but it's at least troubleshooting where I hopefully don't blow up the rest of the system because uh, nothing else should be getting power. This should be power coming in and then into here. And then from here, it's distributed, I believe, to all the various locations that uh, such things are needed, which we still have to determine all that. But uh, at the very least, this will be interesting. Okay. So the meter is set to AC. And... Both probes are clamped onto those two wires, so 
Here's hopefully not frying thousands of dollars worth of computer boards. 8.26 volts? What? Well, I turned it on. Transformer's humming. Nothing's exploded. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's turn this off real quick. Oh, that was embarrassing. Yeah. Let's, um, let's pretend that never happened, okay? Yeah. Let's just pretend you never saw any of that. All right. Contact. <laughs> 240. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Oh. Yes, 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 yes. Oh. Okay. Good news. Since this is, we now have a way of powering up the cabinet. Yes. I don't know if you, oh, hip thrust, hip thrust. Oh. Okay. Sorry. I'm a little excited. A little excited. Whew. All right. I've calmed down. Before we go too far, let's check. Uh, let's turn off the power. Um, we should. The computer should now have 220 going to it, which is good because it has a 220 power supply. The question is, do we want to fire up this board and the rest of the electronics before we go through? Because all we need is one uh, 110 volt or 220 volt line touching uh, the base or ground or something along those lines and we're hosed so and there's enough things just kinda willy-nilly scattered about that I, I really want to have a better look where everything's going uh, and by that I mean we have all the various computer cords here now, I'm not too worried about these I think this all kinda makes sense in of itself what? is there a soundboard or speaker? what's this? Um, but up here, we have a few things that are disconnected. Here we have a few things that were kind of chewed up a little bit here. Let's see if you can see that. So yeah, up here, we have a few things that have been chewed up and disconnected, which I believe this uh, was some kind of controller for the spindle output. So I would imagine that this probably goes to this uh, VFD down here. Specifically, I imagine this cord here. So that's probably not the end of the world. I don't know where this goes. As long as those are isolated, that's probably fine. And then up here we have this thing, which uh, apparently is connected to something in here. Oh, can't see it. All right. You can't see what that says, but it says it's hooked up to plus 24 volts and plus UM, whatever that is. So I have no idea what that goes to at the moment. Ah, the spindle card. He took out the spindle card. That's what that was. Okay, so um, according to the manual, each one of these is for one of the individual axes, right? And this one was supposed to be for the spindle. So that's power to the spindle control board. That's what that was. Okay. With that said, really the last thing that needs to be hooked up and the last bit of wiring I think that's unaccounted for is this down here. I guess none of these are going to touch anything, so as long as we keep these separated, we could probably turn this thing on and see if the computer works. And that will let us test the brains. I mean, because this just hooks into here, so we need to hook that back in together. I believe this was to the... there was a 24 volt lamp at one point, so I think that's what this goes to. Okay, I think we're making progress though. We've, we've, sort, we've sorted the power, we know it's 220. And we know that it's 220 uh, off of 110. So we're supplying 110 in from our standard household outlet. It's converted via that giant transformer down there into 220, which then powers 
the VFD, and every other bit of equipment on here. The 24 volt power supply, uh, the 12 volt that goes out for, we're, we're going to have to replace this with the one that I found downstairs that we used to prove, uh, to prove that the monitor was working correctly. I, I'm feeling better about this. I feel like there's hope. Um, let's, uh, let's let out the magic smoke. So we have the meter hooked up to the, um, this will be the power supply for the computer. Um, and I want to get that tested. I don't think anything else should touch ground out or, you know, be an issue. So I think we're going to go ahead and try to power this whole thing on. So let's let out the magic smoke. Three, two, one. Say a thousand dollars. Well, nothing exploded. Lights are on. Oh, almost all the lights are on. Yep, yep all the lights are on. <laughs> this thing sat out in the raid for two weeks. Two weeks! And we got 240. Okay. We can hook up the computer. We're going to have to run a new VGA, new cord here. And we're going to have to hook up power supply over here. But <laughs> we're in business. All right, let's check the 24 volts and the power supply. Twenty-four volts. Vinny Vinny Vici. Okay. Um, I'm just really shocked that board survived. I mean, you can look up here. That relay right there took a hit. Some bent prongs, but man, she's mighty. She's a mighty, mighty beast. Okay. Let's not push our luck too far. We'll power down. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one where hopefully we fire this thing up. Man, look at that. I think we got this. We got this, right? Yeah, we got this. This isn't crazy. No. Let's plug stuff back in.